In this video, we're going to look at techniques for graphing quadratic functions, and this is really a summary of all the techniques we've learned in class. And I'm going to do something a little bit different in this video. I'm going to try to do all the work within the Desmos calculator, which means I won't be writing anything. Instead, I'll be doing some typing. And you might want to play along either by using the Desmos file or by having the problems written in front of you and just graphing them by hand. So this walks you through all the steps that I would expect and really all the landmarks when you graph these guys. So I have three problems here. I'm going to walk you through each one, about two minutes each. So here's problem one. Y equals uh, quantity x minus 2 squared minus 3. It is written in vertex form. So h, k. I can see my h, k here. So obviously the first thing I would want to plot is the vertex. The vertex here is 2, negative 3. And I can see that appear down here. Along with that as well, I would also want to plot the axis of symmetry. If I have the vertex as 2, negative 3, the axis of symmetry is the vertical line x equals 2. And I like to make this dotted. So here's my axis of symmetry. So my vertex, my axis of symmetry here. The next thing I want to look at is any y-intercepts. Y-intercepts are pretty easy to get. They occur when you plug in 0 for x. I can do that quite easily by plugging in a 0 here, but we might have to do it by hand. 0 minus 2 is negative 2. Squared gives me 4. 4 minus 3, that means I have a y-intercept at 1. So my y-intercept is at 0, 1. Oops, I need to make that a point, parentheses. And I can see that appear right here. Along with that, I also like to put in what I call its mirror point. And this is the beauty of putting in the axis of symmetry. If I am two paces away from the y-intercept here, from the x -ax or from the axis of symmetry, that means I can also go two over here, and I'm guaranteed to have another point. And clearly by inspection, this is the point for 1. So I like that as well. So putting in the y-intercept and its mirror point are kind of nice. The last thing I want to look at is what are the x-intercepts? Keep in mind x-intercepts will occur when y equals 0. So think about how you would solve this if y equals 0. Well, I can't write this one out, but we can think it out here. This means I take the negative 3, add it to the other side. I'm going to do this piece. I can add it to the other side. I get 3 equals x minus 2 squared. And you notice Desmos is nice enough to give me these answers as decimals, and I will be graphing these eventually, but I want you to think about what this means. If I were to continue to solve this, I'd take the square root of both sides, I'd have plus or minus root 3, and the 2 would have to come over to the other side. So really what I would have here for x-intercepts, I'd have 2 plus the square root of 3, 0. And now you see that point was just graphed. And I would also have 2 minus root 3. 0. And there they both are. And I like this because it tells you 2 is my axis of symmetry. Both the intercepts are root 3 away. So it gets a symmetry idea here. We certainly are just going to graph them by using the decimals, however. And now we have everything we need. We see where the parabola is going to come in nicely here. You can draw it in, in your graph paper, or I can just verify, cheat using Desmos, and you can see that that is where our parabola is. So if it's in vertex form, x-intercepts, y-intercepts, find that vertex in the axis of symmetry. All right, we're going to move on to problem two. I need to get rid of all this other stuff here. I'm going to turn everything off. Now I move on to problem two. Here's problem two. This one you can see is written in standard form. I've also written as a function. Negative one-half x squared minus 3x minus 1. A couple things you can do here. So first of all, I'm going to try to find that vertex. And I'm going to use our trick. I hate saying trick, but we are process for finding vertices. It's the opposite of b over 2a. So the opposite of b, so opposite of negative 3 is 3. 2 times negative 1 half is negative 1. I'm going to have negative 3. And it's negative 3 what? Well, it's negative 3 what you get when you plug negative 3 into this function. So negative 3 squared is 9. I'd have to do negative 1 half of that. Minus 3 times negative 3, that's plus 9 minus 1. I'm going to leave it to you to do that work. I'm going to cheat a little bit and just call it f of negative 3. Isn't that clever? I get a little way, I get away with a little bit there. And I can see by inspection that this clearly comes out as, let's see, three and a half. So seven halves is what it should come out as. And you should take the time to verify that. That also means I'm all set to do my axis of symmetry. My axis of symmetry, therefore, is x equals negative three. Again, I like it dotted. You hold down the button, it can make it a dotted line. That looks kind of nice. All set to go. One thing about standard form that vertex form doesn't necessarily tell you is the y-intercept easily. Negative 1 is what happens if I plug in zeros for x's here. I'll get negative 1. So I'm going to go ahead and plot the point 0, negative 1. 
uh, 0, comma, right? 0, negative 1. There it is. And again, I want to play with that mirror point. I'm three paces away here. So if I think it out, three paces over here. I also, for free, I also get the point negative 6, negative 1. So that looks nice. And now I'm going to try to find um, those x-intercepts. Well, what is in standard form? You I mean you could write it in completing the square form in vertex form, but you can also use the quadratic formula, and that's perfectly okay here. Whoops, I'll move down a little bit here. So I'm going to go ahead and use the quadratic formula and fill it in, and it's okay to get decimals here. i got to be careful with some of the uh, uh, parentheses because of a numerator and denominator. Opposite of B, I'm going to do it plus minus. I can only do one at a time, so plus. Uh, in parentheses, B squared, I know, is 9 minus 4 times A times C. Well, let's think this out a little bit. Negative times a negative is a positive. Um, 4 A C, this is 1 half, so 0. 0.5. Whoops, 0. 0.5. Five. I think I have everything I need there. And it's divided by 2a. So really it's just being divided by negative 1. Okay, And I can see that I have negative 5.64. And I'm going to go ahead and plot that point. So negative 5.64, 0. There it is. Looks nice. And I can just come back up here again and I can change the plus to a minus and I'll get the other version which is negative 0.35, that's kind of nice, negative 0.35, 0, there that is. And there it is. I can see the parabola taking shape here. I can see it's going to come down here. It's going to come down here. Also, keep in mind that A in this problem is negative 1 half, so I should expect a wider parabola, and I graph it, and there it is. Looks nice. And that's problem two. Okay, about three minutes of problem, so we're doing well here. All right, let's get rid of everything. We'll move on to problem three. A lot of stuff here, huh? Let's get rid of it all. Problem three. Here's problem three. Got a couple choices here. It's in um, standard form. Um, I have a couple choices about what I could do with it. Since it's in standard form, right away, I want to do the things that are easy. I know that when I'm in standard form, right away, negative five is the y-intercept. So I'm going to go right ahead and plot that. Zero, negative five. I want to do things that are easy. Whoops. Zero, comma negative 5. So I have that. I will have to move this up a little bit in order to get that. Huh? There it is. 0, negative 5 is right there. That's about all I got so far. Um, I could also play around and try to get the vertex as well, opposite of b over 2a. I'm going to try something a little bit different with this one. I'm going to start writing this one in vertex form. Let me complete the square on this one. So we'll do y equals. First step is I got to take, I got to factor that 2 out. So I have x squared minus 2x and I have minus 5 over here, and I'm going to turn this off. It's cheating a little bit on me. Okay, So all I've done is I have uh, taken out the 2 here, the GCF. Okay, What would I need to complete the square here? If I start my next step, I need y equals 2 times, let's get rid of parentheses, 2 times, looks like x minus 1. I'm going to turn this off again. Squared. But that means that I'd have to have a plus 1 here. But what am I going to do? I can't just add a plus 1. But keep in mind, this plus 1 eventually gets distributed and multiplied by the 2. So this has the net effect of adding a 2 to this side. And usually I would add a 2 to the other side. But something else you can do is I can subtract 2 from the same side, and that gives me that net effect of 0. I end up with negative 7. You might want to walk through that step again here and verify that these three things are all uh, equivalent to one another. Let's take a step back and see what we have here. So very nice and easily, I've now turned it into vertex form. And now I have the vertex. The vertex here is 1, negative 7, if I've done everything right. And I need a lot more space here, huh? So 1, negative 7. That also means my axis of symmetry is x equals 1. Again, dotted line. There it is. Oh, and now I can do my mirror point as well. Mirror point here. Here, I can also see that that is 2, negative 5. Looks good. All set to go. And I can also now find my uh, intercepts as well. I can find my x-intercepts. Let's take a look at this one. What's in vertex form? I add the 7 to the other side. I would divide by 2. I would take the square root of that. So I'm really going to take the square root of 3.5. I know we don't have definitely like decimals here. Um, but I'm going to take the square root in my next step. Uh, and I'm going to add 1 to it because the 1 would have to come over as well. So 1 plus the square root of 7 halves, 
That gives me 2.87. Kind of nice. Zero. There it is. And I can also do the negative version. I get negative 0.87. Uh, where's my negative sign? And my parabola is taking shape here. Move it down a little bit. Go back to my any of these originals because they're all equivalent. So the red is equivalent to that one. They are all equivalent to each other. They're all perfectly wonderful and great. Okay. It's about 10 minutes to go through three examples there. I hope this was helpful to you. And this is the procedure we'll be using uh, to graph these pretty much in class.